I've been sitting here trying to figure out what to film for today's video. While Kintanya is editing in bed right now, her vlog. And I just realized that I spent an entire month living in Jakarta last month. But what's interesting is that going into this trip, I had no idea what I was getting myself into, pretty much. I'd never been to Jakarta. I had no idea where I was gonna live, what the, what the best place was to stay or even eat. And most of all, what was I going to do there? So after living there for a month, I had learned a lot. And so in this video, I wanted to share the 10 things that I had learned after living in Jakarta, Indonesia. Now, I think the first thing and most important thing to know is that Jakarta is very big. There are over five districts, actually six if I'm not mistaken, because I believe I saw a comment in one of my videos saying that the Thousand Islands was considered a sixth district. So originally I had thought that there was five districts and after spending an entire month living there, I honestly had not seen everything that I had planned to see. I had filmed possibly like eight videos after living there for a month and I had only just reached the tip of it. So if you guys are planning to just visit Jakarta for a few days, you should definitely stay a lot longer because there is so much more to do and so much more to see. And in fact, I'm actually planning on eventually coming back to Jakarta to see and finish up the rest of the content that I had planned there. Now, the second thing you guys need to know is that, sorry, I need my notes here for this one. Oh yeah, of course, renting a motorbike is more, mm, it's a lot harder than you think. Uh, because when I was living in Bali, it is very easy to rent a motorbike. And immediately, one thing I realized is that it is very hard to find a motorbike to rent. Uh, that is, of course, unless you know a local that lives in Jakarta and is willing to rent one to you. Now, after realizing that renting a motorbike would be far more difficult than, say, renting in Bali, the next best option for me was, of course, getting taxis and trying to figure out the public transportation system. And the next thing that I had learned quickly is that the public transportation system in Jakarta is surprisingly very good. So if you guys are ever in Jakarta, make sure you guys check out the Trans Jakarta buses as well as the amazing clean and comfortable MRT system. So the metro that they have just built in Jakarta is just beautiful, stunning. Even Kentanya was surprised by it. That was her first time on it and she even loved it. So that says a lot. So make sure you guys are trying the public transportation system. Don't just use grabs, taxis, gojeks. Actually try to use the public transportation system. It works very well. Now while trying to learn that public transportation system in Jakarta was fairly difficult at first, I must say the people were very helpful in helping me trying to figure it out. So there is a big, big language barrier in Jakarta, especially the area that I was living in. Um, there weren't that many people that spoke English. However, the people that I did ask for help were more than willing to help. So when you guys visit Jakarta, don't be scared to ask people for help. If they don't speak English, they're more than willing to help you using Google Translate. So you just have to ask. And that is another thing that I learned living in Jakarta is that people are very helpful. You just gotta ask. Now, this next one might start a bit of a heated discussion in the comments. So let me make one thing clear. When I moved to Jakarta, I had basically set a budget of about a thousand US dollars and I chose to live comfortably. Now, that doesn't mean you can't live cheap and affordably in Jakarta. In fact, a lot of the locals had mentioned to me in the comments that they were spending far, far less than I was, but I had chose to live in, in West Jakarta, which was a bit of an expensive area. And so while Jakarta is pretty costly, it really depends on your lifestyle. For myself, I was gonna be working a lot on my videos, so I wanted to live somewhere comfortable, somewhere nice, and so I had spent quite a lot of money on living expenses. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't live affordably and live between $500 to $800. You can find affordable accommodations and eat a lot of really good local foods. So while my expenses were a lot higher than I expected, that doesn't mean that you can't live affordably. But the point I'm trying to make here is that while cost of living for me was quite expensive, 
that doesn't mean it has to be for you. Now, one thing you guys will come to learn immediately about Jakarta when you first get there is that there are a lot of malls, and I do mean a lot. Just in the one area that I was living in, in Taman Anggrek, there was three malls just within like two blocks of my apartment building. I had Central Park Mall, Taman Anggrek Mall, and Neo Soho Mall. It was quite a lot of shopping I could have done in, uh, in that area. So one thing you will come to realize is that every few blocks, there's a mall within some close vicinity of you. Now, when I visited my very first mall in Jakarta, the very first week, I realized something very unusual which I had never experienced in another country. And that was, I was getting a lot of looks and a lot of people looking at me specifically. And if you're Indonesian, please comment below. Let me know the reason for this or if you've experienced this before. But um, from what I understand is that Jakarta doesn't get a lot of tourists or foreigners for that matter. Yes, there are a lot of expats and foreigners living in Jakarta, but Jakarta doesn't seem to get as much tourism as say Bali specifically. So it seems that whenever there's a foreigner around or whenever there's an expat that's walking around Jakarta, they attract a little more attention than say when I would be here in Bali. So this was just something very unusual and very new that I had experienced uh, nowhere else really. So comment down below, let me know what your thoughts are about that. However, walking the streets of Jakarta, well, how do, I, how do I say this? There wasn't that many streets. <laughs> there was not a lot of sidewalks is what I should say. Uh, specifically even in North Jakarta, um, West Jakarta where I had Taman Anggrek, there weren't that many sidewalks for me to walk on. However, I will say that when I was in Central Jakarta and South Jakarta, it was very pedestrian friendly. There was a lot more sidewalks for me to explore and walk around in the city. So if you're planning on exploring the city, although on the maps it may look small, Jakarta is very big. And walking around the city may be a little more difficult because there's gonna be a lot of traffic, which I will get to just in a minute. Uh, but some places might not be as pedestrian friendly as others. So getting back into the traffic. Before going to Jakarta, one thing I was told a lot about was the traffic and the air quality in Jakarta. So the traffic was pretty normal to me compared to Bali even. And uh, there was maybe a handful of days where you couldn't really see the, see the buildings in front of you. And that is just one part of living in a big city in Southeast Asia. So just realize there might be some days where the air quality is not the best and there might be days where there's just a lot of traffic. However, it was really hot on some days, like really, really hot. And so those are the 10 things that I learned while living in Jakarta, Indonesia. Now I had an amazing time living there and I'm definitely going back. I have a lot more videos that I plan to film there that I just didn't have the time to do. So coming back there for sure. And if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a like. Comment down below anything that surprised you if you've ever traveled through Jakarta or if you've ever lived there. And I'll see you guys next week. Peace.